Hi there. Well, we're approaching Christmas. Not that you'll ever guess that. And I thought it'd be a good idea to look back at some of the videos I've made over this, this last year. And also, at the same time, perhaps look forward to 2023 and I'll tell you my plans for videos for the, for the new year. Now, it is a bit uh, dreary out here. The garden's basically gone to sleep. All the leaves have come off and it is looking a little bit sad at the moment. Um, weather's not, not much better. Um, it's very misty, quite cool and it has forecast rain later on. So I thought, what better place to make a video than in my pub shed. And at the same time, it will give any new subscribers um, a look at my, my pub shed. This it was my lockdown project. I uh, built it in lockdown. Um, it sort of got me through lockdown, it did. I really enjoyed building it. And it is a great place to go if you want a little bit of peace and quiet. Now, like I say, it is Christmas and I have made an effort. I have definitely made an effort, but we don't want to overdo things. So I think we can say the Christmas side of it is over and we'll, we'll get down to, to making the video. We don't want to overdo this Christmas lark. So we'll head off into the pub. Um, I'll show you around. We'll have a, a long chat about videos and we'll have a few pints as well. Follow me. Well, welcome to my pub shed. This is just the bar area. It was a later addition to the pub. Um, don't use it a lot. It gets used more in summer. I've got a perfect draft here, so you can have a cool, very cool, three degree lager in the um, in the summertime. I say lager. There is various keg beers, as you know, you can get with it. We've got a fridge here, not too much in. Um, it's got a freezer section, so you can get ice from there as well. So again, it's used more, more in the, the summer time. Um, if you saw the last video, you'll remember there was a big panoramic picture up here of Derbyshire in the area where I, I walk and camp. Um, it deteriorated a bit, so I took that down and we've got a nice um, selection of whiskey bottles. I might add, they're all empty, but uh, it adds to it. And loads of beer mats, I've just put them up on the, uh, on the roof. Um, I'll show you them in a little bit. And an essential bit of kit for any pub shed is a toilet. So yeah, where's the light, what's the light? So that is, my toilet, um, if you're up here for quite a few hours, you don't want to be going backwards and forwards to the house. So uh, that was added probably about 18 months ago, but uh, fantastic, makes life such a lot easier. So that's mainly the bar area. It's getting a bit chilly, so I'm, I'm gonna bring the camera in, get the door shut, uh, Get the heater on, and I'll, I'll show you around the west, rest of this uh, this bar. Like I say, I don't use this part of the pub too much, uh, mainly in summer. This is a nice place to sit. You can have the door open. You've got the music coming from the, the main part of the pub. Got perfect draft over there for a, a cool glass of uh, beer and that. But I, I only recently sort of... Uh, fitted these, uh, well they're actually, it's a drinking pub this, these are Coca-Cola trays, but if you, you've got to think, these ladies were the 
sort of the, the glamour girls of the 1920s, the Edwardian to 1920s time. Um, so yeah, I thought they very attractive and uh, really add to it. I need another one like that to go there and I can only get them in America. Um, and I ain't paying, I'm waiting for one cheap to come up, but I'm, I'm missing one there. When I've got that, then I've got my trays up and that. What we'll do now, well, we're gonna go into the main part of the, the pub, um, get a drink and I'll show you around there. But I'm just gonna leave you looking at these beer mats. Um, I only just put these up, there's a, there's a hundred and, hundred and thirty of them. It took me ages to stick them up. He sort of added to it, but when you look, when I was putting them up, it's like a, a journey through time in beer, because most of them are old and vintage, if you could say vintage, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s beer mats. So, I'll leave you, I'll talk you through uh, the last 40 years, 50 years of uh, beer mat history and then we'll, uh, we'll go into the main part of the pub. Starting in the 1970s, John Smith's bitter, still going strong today. Webster's Yorkshire bitter, not so good. Stones as a Sheffield pint. McEwan's export, keg beer. Mackerson stout, old person's drink. Suit me today, Hofmeister the bear. Cherry B, a lady's drink. And Pony with a kick in it, another lady's. We're bread tankard and they did trophy as well. Sheffield Ward's bitter. Cameron's and Younger's both keg bitters. John Smith's Magnet, bit, bit darker. Town bitter, oh dear. Remember drinking that in the Claymore pub in Sheffield. Tetley's loads of it about. Double Diamond, the first beer I ever had in a pub. Mansfield Bitter, a load of that about. And two, a little bit more modern, Titanic Plum Porter and Black Sheep Bitter. A history of beer over the last 40 years. Interesting those beer mats, aren't they? It's, it's like you, you remember all the advertising slogans of the day probably a lot of them 30 40 years ago anyway let's go and get a pint wow it's warm in here i think the heat has been on a little bit mind you it soon warms up um get it up to a a right temperature right We'll, we'll get a pint, I think. Uh, we'll have my Wainwright glass. Got Abidale Moonshine on. Um, it's a beer I really like. Uh, pale ale. Fairly hoppy. A little bit of citrus. Um, very popular. Very popular in Sheffield. Uh, I got that a couple of days ago from my local... Um, it's Archer Road beer shop down near Mill Houses. Um, got that in the fridge in the corner. Now you've got to be careful here or we're just going to spend the whole of this video talking about pubs and beer. Once I've got this pint we'll get on with what we're supposed to be doing. A review of 2022. But I do tend to get carried away. Give it a minute or so to settle. But yeah, so we'll we'll get settled down and we'll we'll have a chat about um this last year. This uh, 2022. Generally it's been a good year. It's been a good year. But that looks a nice pint of moonshine. It probably wants a bit more settling, but I'm thirsty. Very nice. I think we'll sit over here. All settled down now. Very, very cosy in here. A 
Now, 2022 for me has been a very busy year. And probably for a lot of other people. We'd sort of just come out of COVID. And I think, well, we, we've been basically cramming in holidays and trips that we we had to cancel or, or we'd, we'd planned earlier and they never went ahead. So I found it a, too busy, a very busy time. And I had real difficulty getting out on any wild camps. At the end of last year, 21 into 22, I did have a break from YouTube. First time I've ever had a break. But I, I was just, I'd lost a bit of my enthusiasm and I just wanted a break from it. So I stopped filming for about two or three months, didn't produce anything. And I think in January, put me first video on for the new year and it was a return to the pub shed not a bad one so we came up here and I basically explained why I'd uh, stopped and I was glad to come back um, doing the videos keeps me busy it keeps me occupied keeps me brain active and I just enjoy making them and I love all the comments so I was glad to come back so that was January. In February, first wild camp for a while. Wanted to do a local one, so I went up to Oxstones, just above Ringing Low, um, and then camped not far from there. And it it was great to be back in the tent um, and cooking. That's a that's a side I like of camps. Uh, it was an easy camp. I hadn't got far to walk, and it was just get back in the tent, spend the night, get some cooking done, have a nice meal. So yeah, so that I were back into it then, I were back into it. So next place, probably March, went to Higgard Tor again. I'm not going far, am I? I'm, I'm round, I'm round where I live. And yeah, so I went to Higgard Tor. Scenery was unbelievable. That was the reason I camped there. I got the drone up and some fantastic scenery. Ah. Oh, it was like from prehistoric times. The only thing again against that camp, it was such a beautiful area and so easy accessible that there were loads of people there. You got school trips, uh, people into archaeology, there was everything. So there were people all over. But I chose the camp there and I knew that. So yeah, that was, uh, so we'd done a couple of camps, and I thought it was time we got back into the pub. So then we, I got, I'd had the ham pulling from when I built this place, but I'd, I'd bought a perfect draft, which is like a keg type beer. So I wanted to do a comparison. So we compared perfect draft to a ham pull. I am biased, I like ham pull beer. They both have the merits, both have the drawbacks, the costs, but it was a good comparison. So yeah, all these videos are there to view if you want to look at them. So yeah, so we did the uh, the perfect draft uh, and hand pull comparison. I'll be getting another pint soon. So where did we go next? I thought, I've got to get a bit further than ringing lower in my local area. So, Kinder Scout. I think we're into May now. And we don't, we haven't had much rain for a while. But, May time, Kinder Scout. I've been up Kinder Scout in May and it has snowed. So I headed up Kinder Scout, up uh, Ringing Roger, uh, Golden Clough. Oh, it's flowing. It was completely dry. I could not believe it. I ain't taking a drop of water, relying on uh, a stream and filtering it. So, boom, it threw me completely. And I, I thought, well, I've either abandoned the camp or go and find water. I didn't realise it had been so dry or so little rainfall. So I headed right over to the other side, um, Blagden Clough, and I found some pools of water. It wasn't really flowing, but it was enough to get some water and we got a great bivy camp so um, it worked out well it worked out better in the end because it threw a challenge at me 
you've no water and you have to think and get it sorted and I enjoyed that one there so that was um, that was around May yeah Kinder Scout uh. ah because we'd gone up Kinder Scout I sort of realized at that stage it was this for me how unfit I was I struggled carrying my gear up there um, and it, it was like ringing alarm bells in my head this is no good like first camp away from the easy camps at home and I'm struggling so alarm bells rang in my head that uh, yep you ain't fit enough to do this uh, if you carry on like this you, uh, you won't be camping much longer um, your fitness is rubbish and I knew I was going out drinking quite a bit coming up to the pub shed a little bit too much so yeah it rang a few alarm bells uh, I thought yeah time to do something about it I think I'll just get another pint while we we think about that problem Just look at that. Every glass is a work of art. Where did we get up to? Oh yeah, not feeling as fit as I should and probably drinking a little bit too much. So, what was the next video we did in June? the pleasure of drinking and it certainly has and always will be a pleasure for me I think having a, a drink with friends can there be anything better I don't think so such a lot of fun such a lot of laughter it, it's just magic um, yeah but I realize perhaps got to be done sensibly so that's what that video was about it was the pleasures of drinking which there are a lot it was a positive look at the pleasures of drinking and then where did we head next ah now it was the italian camp i like i like different types of food and i like different types of drink a while ago I did a French camp and it gave me opportunity to do frog's legs and crepes Suzette and some real nice cooking. So I thought, yeah, I want to do stuff different. I can't just go out and camp, cook basic food, that's it. So, different country. So we did an Italian camp. And I, I enjoyed making that. We're in the nicer weather now. Um, I think I took a tent because of the midges. But we had some beautiful Italian food and wow some great some great Italian drinks uh, it, it works so well it just centers on that but uh, I think that I think the Sambuca finished me off uh, but yeah that that was good and we will do some more of those um, so yeah where did we head off then yes I then decided yeah I'm gonna get fitter so we're going to head further afield. So I went to Bullstones, which is getting quite a way up the um, Derwent Valley. I did take the easy way and parked at Langset, walked across, but it was a great camp. It was um, fantastic scenery, beautiful freshwater spring. All right, it's got a lot of midges and I had I'd gone on the, on the sort of sheltered side of the rock so I got fantastic view but I was in the still air and the midges got me but yeah it was a good camp and it's when I think we talked about getting older which I am and I realize yeah it has effects on you um, 
your energy, your, your fitness, everything starts to drop off. So it was again a red flag as if to say, look, you're getting older. If you want to carry on doing this type of uh, camping, you've got to get fitter. So yeah, I spoke quite a bit about getting older and uh, that was a, I like to have a theme and that was the theme of that um, video was, uh, was getting older and wild camping. So, I've got in my head now, get fitter, calm down on the drink, eat healthy, more exercise. What do we do? Well, in September, I never even had time to put a video on. I think we went to, we went to Scotland, we went to the Western Isles, eating beautiful food, drinking lots of various drinks, uh, totally opposite to what I'd been saying. We had a month of, um, I think there was a couple of beer festivals going on, uh, Toward all Scotland, all different food, but you naturally are on holiday, you go out for a meal at night, bottle of wine, you're doing a whiskey, oh yeah, oh god. So it, I did totally opposite to what I said I was going to do, and we spent a month of uh, eating and drinking too much. That's life, isn't it? That's how it works out. But back home October and we were then back out while camping Kinder Scout where I'd gone out in May and there's no water and I had to ban abandon the camp we headed back up there ringing Roger and I'd got this beautiful ledge it was like a room with a view all looking down over the Vale of Edale it was uh, again a lovely camp uh, Got a little bit windy, but added to it. One thing out the blue, just as I got to the top, there's a survival bag laid out on the path with somebody in it. And I didn't realise it, but all the mountain rescue people were coming up. And it, it, I found out later a lady had fallen, painful injury to her shoulder. Quite correctly, they put in a survival bag and they were just waiting for the mountain rescue. Um, it made me it made me appreciate the voluntary service of the mountain rescue and such a great job they do. And it also brought to my attention while camping, walking around Kinder and Bleaklow on your own. It is risky, but that is probably the attraction that we go to these wild remote places. There is risk. You've just got to look after yourself. But uh, yeah, so it did. Uh, it did bring to me attention that uh, yeah. Take care. We're getting very safety conscious and health awareness as the uh, year advances. And then. Where did we end up then? Um, November, oh yeah, Houndkirk Hill. My plan was to go further afield, either up Derwent or Kinder, but oh, the roads were closed all over and it just, it just seemed too difficult to, to go anywhere like that. So I chose to go for a local camp on Houndkirk Hill. Relaxing camp, nice bit of food, New whiskey to try. It's going to be very quiet. And what do we get? Well, immediately I break my camera. And then we get burning Range Rovers on the, the horizon. Um, couldn't believe it. It's as if you go out. You go out wild camping and adventure finds you. Something always happens on a wild camp. Whether it's burning cars, I've never had one of them before, mountain rescue, no water, something happens and just out the blue, we think, wow, I never expected that to happen. But yeah, that is uh, 
probably the attraction of wild camping. Something out the ordinary will always happen. It will not be a relaxed, quiet camp. Something will happen. So that brings us up to um, end of November and my uh, last wild camp for 2023. And what a wet one that was. 16 hours of rain. I originally planned to camp at uh, Crow Stones up near Howden Edge. But once I got on the top of Howden Edge, I realised how bad the weather was. And I did take the right decision to uh, abandon the wild camp, which is always difficult. You've, you've set your sights on where you're heading, and it is really difficult to think, right, forget it. But yeah, right decision, abandon the wild camp uh, that I'd planned, and we head lower down into the Derwent Valley, where I had uh, a lot more comfortable night. Uh, I could say one thing I did learn from that camp was probably the importance of um, a satellite tracker. It's happened a couple of times where I've had to change location and I've had no phone signal or anything so I couldn't let my wife know and actually changed from my original plan. So yeah, that is definitely the way forward and I'm, I think I'm looking at your Garmin in reach too. Something like that, um, as I get a bit older and I do camp on my own, I'm sure that is uh, the right and sensible way forward. And that brings us up to present day, about a week or so before Christmas. I started the year Definitely feeling very unfit, um, probably drinking a bit too much and feeling I was getting a little bit old, a little bit older. Anyway, a year later and I'm a year older, so that's not gone very well, is it? I've actually become a year older, oh dear, but not drinking so much and definitely an awful lot fitter. I look forward to climbing up a steep hill now. I actually enjoy it because I know I can do it. So yeah, everything's looking good for the future and uh, next year especially. So I think I'll uh, I'll finish this off and we'll, um, we'll have a look at my plans for 2023. I think we'll have another. Right, time to look forward to 2023. I might not be so keen on Christmas, the end of the year, but I love New Year and the start of a, a new year. And it's, it's, it's a time to think of new challenges, new holidays. Everything is new. You're looking forward. You're going it all into new stuff. So I like New Year. I like that fresh start. And you have all your, your good ideas. The old year's gone now. So we're looking forward to 2023. Now, I know my channel is, it started off as a wild campaign, and I've gone off on various tangents. I spent two years crawling under all the, the river culverts and drains of Sheffield. Um, I spent a lot more time going on railway journeys, so I, I, I do have a, a varied content, I'd like to think, but it is basically wild camping. But I can get a little bit bored with doing the same thing. So I try and vary, and one way to vary is to come up to the pub shed. And as I've said, I enjoy having a drink, sensibly. So 
will definitely be coming back up here a few times in 2023. I've got a couple of ideas. They're just general beer drinking videos that I'd, li I'd like to show and talk to you about. So we'll, we'll definitely be coming up here and doing a couple of pub videos. I know a lot of people say, oh, when are we going back to a pub? Well, we will be. I'll try and make it a, a fairly regular thing. Uh, can't come up here all the time. It's supposed to be wild, wild camping. Now, as for where a wild camp, I don't really want to go out the Peak District. I, f I feel I'm too old to be starting to venture to new areas and think, where am I going to park? Which path goes where? The Peak District, I sort of know. So I quite often even have to take a map. I just go out there and the campsites, I don't always know where I'm going to camp. I think there is, in the Peak District for me, there is a life times worth of different camping locations so I don't feel I need to go out the Peak District I can't be bothered as well I'm happy to stay in the Peak District I try and camp in different locations nearly every video admittedly I will go back to some favorite campsites but part of it for me is I want to I want for me I want to camp somewhere different. I don't like going back to the same place. So I'm staying in the Peak District and I will try and bring you as many different locations as I can. I often just go out for a day's walking and I'm basically wrecking campsites. Uh, I'll walk along a two mile ridge or an edge and I'm you, you, they're not easy to find. You can spend hours climbing down this is no good, move on a bit, I'll wander down here, this is no good. Then you clamber down some rocks and wow, look at this, I found this little ledge or something like that, or this perfect little site. So a lot of time I spend wrecking and I find all these different sites. And they are some of my favourite places to camp when you find this perfect location. Now, I like to plan my rail camps. It's, it's what I've always liked doing. I like to plan ahead. But sometimes they can be spontaneous and they can be the best ones. I'm thinking of a camp you go on, you set off, unexpected snowfall, or you're in your tent and a gale force wind picks up. So they can be your, your, your best camps in a way. I do like to plan mine ahead a little bit, but sometimes your your spontaneous camps are the the most memorable ones. And like I said earlier, a major part of wild camping for me is the cooking side. So I've enjoyed doing the themed ones, the French, the Italian. So I'm hoping to do a couple more different countries. I I think just learning about other people's food and trying to cook it and it, it just adds to it, it's a, it's a challenge uh, yeah uh, so we'll definitely pick pick some different countries out and uh, see what what uh, food we can produce on a wild camp now I've, I've been doing YouTube probably about eight years I think and it has been like I say, started off as wild camping, that's been the main theme. But before that, before YouTube, I used to do a lot of long distance walks, uh, just for the fun of it. I'd pick a walk and uh, get all the maps and just set off and go and do it in a day. Uh, got all these badges I used to send for. Each walk I completed, you got a certificate or a badge or something like that. Uh, various ones, um, oh god, I got so many in here. Three Peaks did that so long ago. Now, I did uh, quite a few long distance ones like four or five days walk. Cumbrian Way did that with the lads at work. Channel Islands walk around Jersey with my wife. 
ped his way in Norfolk Co Co uh, Coast Path again with my wife. Various of uh, John Merrill's walks, a lot were local to this area. Peaked, peak Challenge, Peak End to End, Little John Challenge, I think it was 31, 31 mile. So I did various walks. Um, What's that one? That was a good one. Derwent Valley, 55 mile. So I did that over three days and sort of camped along the way. Chesterfield Round Walk, Rotherham Round Walk. Little Badge, Longshore Limber. It was 34 miles in one day. Did the Light Wake. I think that was 41 in one day. So I did all these walks and then sort of when... I started doing YouTube, it was more little walk out, camping, and walk back. So I never really did much walk, long distance walks after that. But earlier this year, um, I think it was Paul Messiner and Andy Beavers, they did the Derwent Watershed Walk. And poof, in my brain, I thought, that is one I've always wanted to do and I never did it. It is a tough one. I think it's 40 miles on the toughest part of the Peak District. That's probably why I didn't do it. So I, I have thoughts of doing one or two sort of a bit long distance walks but I want to enjoy it. I ain't, I ain't going out to do it in a day or two days. I'm thinking um, Derwent Watershed, 40 mile, I'll do it over three days, so I've got 13, 12, 13, 14 miles a day with backpacking gear and enjoy it and film it and that. So there was another one, uh, Ken Jones, now he wrote some booklets of some walks he did probably very many years ago, but one that really attracted me was the Dark Peak Stones starts off on the Snake uh, Pass top and it goes round all the memorable stones like um, you know, gotta, gotta remember them now Barrow, Bull, Crow um, <laughs> there's loads of, there's 20 of them, I can't remember them so there's 20 stones all the way back down to Lady Bower it's, about, it's only about a 20 mile walk, but I like to do that over probably an overnight uh, and, and split it up. And the idea that each of these stones you climb. So rocking stones, um, sh 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 horse stones, um, bleak low stones. So it, it follows that. So what I'm basically saying, that there's a few walks where... You get, you get, there might be two to three days, so you're going to have one or two nights uh, backpacking, uh, camping, and but you're going to walk the rest of it. So I have thoughts of doing that. What spurred me on, like I said, was uh, Paul Messina, Andy Beavers, they did the Don't uh, Want to Shed. I thought, Christ, I've always wanted to do that and I never did it. And I'm thinking now, if I leave it much longer, I might not do it. So yeah. That is something, definitely. I'm, th I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to do it, because I might not. But I'm, that's what I'm thinking for 23, is to do some of these. The longer, I always do like an overnighter, and I enjoy that. But it would be nice to do a bit more walking, um, and uh, camping on the way. It'll certainly make me super lightweight, if I've got to carry like a... Uh, a pack for um, 40 mile or something like that so they they will probably be more in summer months because then I can get away with bivvying if you've got drawbacks with the heat water uh, midges but yeah it should be should be a challenge so that is a a good a good uh, possibility for this coming year Now the other, what other stuff? Yeah, the oven, my homemade oven. That would be nice to get that out again. And uh, I always remember that pizza camp, or should I say, 
pizza and flying ant camp. Um, that was a good camp and we, we took the oven out. So yeah, we might get the oven out and do a camp with the oven. Tree camping. Wow. That is uh, a little bit different. I, would, I didn't do one this year. It is so hard work. It's... Uh, by the time you've hauled all your gear up there, you're, you're shattered and then you've got to start the camp. And I can tell you the hardest thing about those camps is not hauling the gear up, sorry, is finding the perfect tree. You can't just go and climb a tree and haul gear up and camp in it. So it, it, the main difficulty I find was finding the perfect tree in an isolated spot where you're not going to get bothered by anybody because you could imagine filming it, it'd take you half a day to film the climb up and setting the camp up but it would be nice to go back to that and do a tree camp so we'll have to see but those are basically my ideas for 2023 um, they'll be the I'll be up on Kinder, I'll be up on um, Bleaklow and those surrounding areas and I will be at my local camps as well so it is looking like a, a wild camping year with a, through, a few visits to the pub shed thrown in so I think this is going to disappear and we might be having another beer soon Very nice. <sighs> Just beautiful. So, just to mention a uh, couple of videos or a couple of subjects I used to do on my videos were one was um, underground exploring. Well, I spent about two years doing that and it was fantastic. All these uh, underground rivers and culverts I used to go down. Some of them were like, I don't know, nearly a mile long or something like that under the city of Sheffield. But, there isn't anywhere near. I covered everything in my area, so the chances of doing that is slim because I've got to travel so far away to find somewhere new. I like to be down there for six or eight hours or something like that. So I can't see me doing much exploring. And the other thing I loved doing was rail travel. Oh, I absolutely loved it. Before YouTube, I covered all the UK rail network. I went on every bit of track you could go on. Bob a few little bits, basically covered it all. Then I ventured going abroad and I have done a couple of videos and I would like to do more of that. But it's fitting it in. So there is, there is a possibility. So it's probably right time to end this video. I can go on a bit. I think we can say for 2022 it's been a good year we got out of Covid. I've had some great camps I've become a lot more health conscious and at the end of the year I'd like to think I'm a lot fitter. For 2023 really looking forward to it. I've got some great camps planned. I've got some good challenges planned and who knows we might even be fit in a bit of a rail trip or something like that so yeah the future is looking good so I, th I think at this time of the year 
One thing we should remember is uh, friends and family that we have lost. Those happy people we once knew are no longer with us, but they will stay in our hearts forever. So if I could wish you a Merry and a safe Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'll uh, see you in 2023. Cheers, Em. See you soon. Bye, then.